Hey everybody. Um, I was going through some of my old blog posts, I mean old, old, old blog posts, and I came across an idea that I thought would be fun to talk about today. So we're going to talk about the land of black ice and the hollow earth today on Greyhawk Ragnar. <laughs> subject I want to talk about today is the land of black ice and um, the possibilities that Gygax had originally considered the uh, that Earth could be hollow. And this is an absolutely fascinating thing because it comes from real world um, kind of Fortean um, uh, uh, lore, you know, where there are uh, rumors that there are big gaps up at the North and South Poles, and you could enter into the interior of the hollow earth that way, and there are advanced civilizations inside, and there's an inner sun, and everything's kind of plastered against the inside of the, of, of the, of the sphere, um, as well as on the outside where we are. Um, and one of the things that made me think that this is where Gygax was going with this is the description of the land of black ice in the original uh, folio, where it says, Those who have ventured far into the Northlands beyond the Burnial Forest tell of a strange phenomenon. Instead of the normal stark white snow and translucent blue-white ice, there is an endless landscape of deep blue-black ice topped only here and there by normal snowfall. Strange arctic monsters prowl these fields of ebony ice, and the few humans who dwell near the place fear to enter it on account of the beasts and supposedly what lies beyond. Stranger still, they are said to tell of a warmer land beyond the ice where the sun never sets and jungles abound. Um, that's in the original folio. It's in the guide to the world of Greyhawk. Um, that was Gary. That, that, was, that was Gygax saying this. And he was incredibly well, well read. So I can't imagine he was unaware of the idea that there was a hollow earth um, and would take something like that and adapt it to earth because he would he would take stuff from all over the place from history from fantasy from pulps from you know mythology all all kinds of things were, were grist for the mill and i can't imagine that this is just a uh, a coincidence because there's other things um where uh that, that just match that too too closely here's a here's a um a bit from the phantom of the poles um uh uh, the uh, by uh, William Reed, um, it's it's a it's about a how hollow earth thing, but he's quoting a an Arctic explorer from the 19th century, a Norwegian uh, named Frithjof Nansen. So, uh, and he wrote the book Farthest North. So that's what he's that that's what's being quoted here is the the actual explorer. Um, the dust in the polar regions, which Nansen speaks of so so many times, and which was a source of m such annoyance while drifting in the ocean many miles from land, comes from somewhere. It does not grow. It is a commodity without life, cannot reproduce itself, yet it is found in such great quantities that it colors the snow black. And there have been a bunch of theories about what causes this phenomenon. It's a real phenomenon. Black ice in the, in the far north Arctic is a real thing. Um... And there's a lot of, of, uh, of theories about what causes it. One of those theories is, is that it's great clouds of pollen that get pulled up out of the temperate air and, and tropical zones and get deposited through air currents high in the, in the atmosphere, uh, which you know, could make a lot of sense. You know, the pollen falls, more ice goes on top of it, and then you've got black ice or blue, blue ice. Um, so I can't imagine that Gary didn't know about that. Um, and especially when you talk about like the hollow earth theory itself, because there you've got things. Um, here, let me bring this up real quick. Because uh, looking at the more Fortean, uh, you know, Charles Fort kind of thing, we have um, rumors that um, Admiral Richard Byrd who, you know, the famous Arctic explorer, who, um, you know, who, who was the first man to fly over the, I think it was the first, first guy to fly over the South Pole or something like that. Um, there are a lot of rumors that he actually flew over the pole and into the hollow earth. And um, I've, I, I'm obviously, you know, it's, it's one of those conspiracy theory kind of things. You know, I'm not saying that, it's, that it really happened. I'm saying that Gygax 
could have very well been aware of this theory and wanted to use it as part of his campaign. Um, uh, and, and, you know, so there's this all, all these things about, um, you know, his, his description, his so, his theoretical descriptions of what he saw in there and there were great cities and he met the master of the inner earth and, and stuff like that and then he was ordered to keep it quiet and that's why years later the uh, the navy sent a whole bunch of ships down to antarctica to set up a research base under bird's direction there's a whole lot of stuff in there um if you go online that's a rabbit hole you can go down for a long long time but um if you but the the idea though is that gygax just, you know, while looking for all kinds of things to add to the the Greyhawk campaign and and the planet Earth, um, would have known about this. You know, maybe he. I don't know if I don't think he's ever mentioned uh, reading the Fortean Times. It would be really interesting to uh, to ask one of his uh, longtime associates, maybe Rob or Luke or or uh, or. or uh, Ernie might be able to, to know if there were any copies of the Fortean Times around or stuff like that, um, because that's exactly the kind of thing that you would that you know you could throw into a game. And I think the um, the idea that you can go north and north and north, and then what's beyond north? Well, beyond north is in. And um, I love the idea that he threw this in there, um, and and. and it never got developed, obviously. Uh, you know, there was the Hollow World was a whole nother campaign thing. I guess you could adapt that for Greyhawk, although I would love to see a native Greyhawk, um, uh, you know, j you know, a Hollow Earth just made for Greyhawk, um, you know, using a lot of the same tropes that you see on the surface and mirroring them inside. And maybe there are like Darrow f with flying machines who are going in and out, going to other world. You know, there's all kinds of things you could do with this. Um, you know, there could be uh, passages from the surface through the Underdark to the other side. And, you know, uh, all, maybe the Sunless Sea drains into the interior of the Earth or something. There's all, all kinds of crazy stuff you could go with this. Um, but I just wanted to, to you know, point folks into that direction of, you know, we have this very suggestive quote in the guide. And it really... It taps into a whole current of stuff that was happening in the 40s and 50s and 60s, right when Gary would have been, you know, uh, collecting ideas in his mind for, for all kinds of different things. So. Mm -hmm.